Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the Dark Matter Network at ArtBell.com. Are you ready to witness something that you cannot explain? Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central, broadcasting live somewhere in the Nevada Triangle, Central California, right over the mountains from Area 51, China Lake, the the Moore Naval Air Base, so try to figure out where we're at. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez, I am your host for Paranormal Central, thank you for showing up tonight, what you just heard, do you remember that? killer movie that came out several years ago called Fire in the Sky. We have somebody coming on tonight, one of the loggers. His name is Steve Pierce. Alan Thomas, are you there? Yeah, I am. How are you doing, everyone? And behind the sink, sink? In scenes, in the dark shadows, somewhere back there. I can't even see her. She's hiding. Emerald? I'm here. All right. We're going to have a very, very interesting night tonight. Steve Pierce, yes, uh, Fire in the Sky, the Travis Walton abduction. You guys all remember that, I'm sure. If you guys are a UFO nut like we all are, then you remember the abduction of Travis Walton. Well, I've got Steve Pierce coming on tonight. Um, This is going to be his last interview ever. Matter of fact, he's actually said it once before, but he almost called it off on this one. And um, and I actually talked him into coming on, and there was a couple of reasons for it. Uh, I wanted to get him on before he finally said goodbye and never come on again. So I, that's why I got him on before Travis Walton. Um, he actually had published 50 books. He, he did it out of his own pocket, and I had the last two in my possession. And they're autographed, and I'm going to give them away tonight. The book has definitely some information about the Travis Walton abduction, but there's something going on with Steve Pierce that you guys need to hear about, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, Hello, everybody. Are you guys ready? I am, but as you all know, before we get into it, we have the Squatch Report with Danny Valdrama, but before we go on any further, if you are watching us at ParanormalCentral.net, you are now watching us. I am sorry. But if you don't want to see us, you can go to artbell.com and listen there on the Dark Matter Network. 
Yes, Art Bell is broadcasting us worldwide on his network, at the Dark Matter Network, that is. So, all right, let's bring on the uh, Squatch Man himself, Mr. Danny Valderrama. Are you there? I am here. Danny, hey. How's it going? Nice legs, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I shaved just for you. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I didn't realize that. So, <laughs> blind. I could put my glasses on. So, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and go to the Squatch Report for the date. Uh, what's today? Uh, September the 14th, I think. Yes, 2014. Sir. And let me pull those pictures up. And like I said, if you are not watching us on ParanormalCentral.net and you are looking or listening to us at the ArtBell.com website, our pictures are on the homepage. They're labeled Paranormal Central. So let me go to number uno. And a shout out to our house band, Possessed Tranquility. They rock. Yes. They are. <laughs> They're the ones who brought us in. Actually, if you guys don't know, Possessed Tranquility uh, actually wrote a song for our show. And that is the song you guys are, are were listening to when we opened the show and closed the show. So The Unexplained. Um, the Unexplained. And, uh, Available you know, on iTunes. On iTunes. Actually, you can now get the album on iTunes, Possessed Tranquility. I was going to do a show with them probably when we moved to the next studio. That's why I haven't really been pushing them that much. But when we move into the next studio, we're going to bring them in. Uh, have them sit down on the couch and we're going to basically promote the you-know-what out of their album because um, they got, their album's doing some wonders right now around around the world and we'll talk about that though. All right, mister, I got um, picture number one and I recognize this guy. Les Stroud. Les Stroud. And go for it, man. All right. He made this uh, announcement a couple of weeks ago but most people missed it. Um He's getting 10 new Survivor Man episodes Woo. for this year. Four, uh, four of them will be uh, pre-existing episodes, uh, actual survival stories. And six will be about Bigfoot. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So he, he said he makes no claim about knowing or believing or not believing in Bigfoot. But he really wants answers to the mystery. So... Uh, they don't say if he's going to be joined by Todd Standing again, but he said he wants to just uh, get out there and really, he said that the first two episodes were just uh, to test the waters to see if there was an interest and, and there was overwhelming interest. So now he's ready to get in there and dig deeper to find out what the heck is going on. He says there's uh, like plenty of anecdotal stories, uh, DNA samples, tracks, sightings, video footage, vocalizations, and pictures. So he's got to know what the heck is going on out there. Right. So, so he's ready to begin filming, and he'll be he'll once he gets going, he'll be filming for ten months. Wow. Yeah, we should get Almost him on. Whole year. Right. We should get him as a guest. Yeah, we're gonna have yeah. to. We're gonna get have before to. he leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, well, Danny, make it happen, man. All right. Make we'll it happen. See what I can do. Right on. All right. Yeah. So that there's an update too on his son. Uh, after five months oh. of therapy for his cancer, he's cancer free. <gasps> he finally got to go home. No right on, way. Man. Congratulations, yeah. Lester. Wow. And your son. That rocks. That's cool. That is so cool. Good to hear. Yep. All right. Picture number two. Picture number two. There are three pictures for this. Uh, first one is a. Uh, you can't see it, but in the brush there is a train track. The train tracks hidden in there. Cool. And this is from the StanCourtney.com page. And it's been known for a long time that Bigfoot are around the train tracks, and they've also been sighted along power lines. Mm -hmm. They travel all along these because it's like the path of least resistance. So they also have been sighted around old train tracks that have been converted into bicycle paths or hiking paths. So they know what they are. And they know that they can get to an area faster by using them. So uh, Stan was contacted by a, a person in southern Illinois. And that's the next picture. He can sh show you the area of Illinois that he was, he was going to. This guy's name, only his first name was Mike, and he had sightings along these train areas for, he had m uh, many sightings around the train areas. And most were in early spring, just before the leaves are on the tree. And uh, the last one that he went to, he went to this site he met him at, and there was a sighting there four weeks prior. And Mike, he listened to Mike, and Mike said that he thinks that the Bigfoot were hitching a ride on the trains. Really? Stan, Stan didn't believe it at all because he's never heard of any reports of Bigfoot on trains. He's always heard that they were on the tracks and 
the, the train conductors would see them. I have a, I know a few stories in Oregon where the train conduct the train uh, operator saw it on the tracks and it took off up the hill and stuff, but never on the train. So they were standing there talking, and they uh, they were there for about an hour. And as they were getting ready to head back to their cars, they heard a train coming. Says, "Well, let's test your theory." Let's go back and uh, go back down to the tracks and stand right next to the tracks and see if the, what's on this train. So they saw the train around the corner and Stan's recording because every time he conducts an interview, he always records the interviews. So his recorder's still going, and they, what they do is they go like kind of back to back, so they can look north and south at the train going by. And what they were doing was they were looking at the couplings between each train to see because that was the only place that something could be. So as they're going by trains, nothing's happening. And then about halfway through, Stan sees something that's in the middle of the, on the coupling, sitting on the coupling. And the train's going about 30 miles an hour. And he, what he sees is a very large, hair-covered animal sitting down with its back towards the train car. Really? He only saw it for a couple of seconds as the train was going by. And he was just in shock. He couldn't move. He said, like, what the heck was that? He said it didn't look anything like Patty from the Patterson-Gimlin footage. He said it had a five-inch long dark hair. Couldn't see any facial features because it was looking down, like kind of just trying not to move as the train was going. And it, it, the whole interview and the, his reaction and the, both of their reactions as the train goes by is on his website, stancourtney.com. He has the whole uh, interview on there if you want to take a listen to it. And then he was thinking, was it a juvenile? Was it just a short trip? Is it something that he saw his parents do? And that's why he was on it. He had a ton of questions after he saw it. He couldn't believe it. But it did show that they had extreme intelligence in order yeah. to jump on a train and get from one area to another. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that changes the whole thing about, like, migrating and stuff, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you got to look everywhere. <laughs> like, like the ones that go through the Pacific Northwest, you know, that we can get on and go all the way up to Washington. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many times they ride that one. It, it rides all nine. Wow. I wonder if there was a train <laughs> near some of the 411 missing people. Because remember, when, uh, there's a kid that ended up five miles away from where he was right. in a short amount of time. Wow. I wonder if this thing jumped a train with him took off with him. Wow. We're gonna have, that's something that we're going to have to... Um, what the heck going on over there? It's the damn computer. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> She's having technical difficulties. What? The, okay. All right. So that... But after he posted that story, and then in the comments, a bunch of people were coming forward and saying, I've seen a, something on a train, too. It described exactly what you saw, and auburn hair, bulk, sitting on the train, not looking at anything, just head down. So now other people are coming forward and saying, we've seen it too. Hmm. And nobody has, nobody got a picture, huh? Nobody got a picture. No. Oh, well, you know what? Man. You know, those trains are moving awfully fast. And you're not thinking about taking a picture because there's no way in the world that could ever happen. Yeah. How can you, how can a Bigfoot, like, like a homeless person or a hobo climb on a train? That's just impossible. Why? Because there's no such things as Bigfoots. Yeah, but yeah. now now they know it. They can just go out there and set a camera up and let it roll. Well, you it's know, but but every train. But yeah, I mean, just another place to look. Now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now that, with a flur. Wow. Oh, That's very man. cool. That is very cool. Okay. Number. Story number three. Number three. I got picture number four coming up. Okay. All right. This has three pictures to it. They're just uh, zoomed in and full. Um, this is from the Bigfoot Believers page. It was posted at the beginning of the month. This is from Adam Bird, who somebody sent him a picture, and his, her name was Juliet Roberts, and he decided to post it on the on the website because he didn't know what the heck it was, oh. and she, and she just uh, attached a little thing to it saying, uh, "I've never had an encounter personally, but I'd like to share this picture of an encounter my friend had, experienced just yesterday on a hike." in the Brown Track area of the Adrionics, New York. And he said the creature, or she said the creature is in a dip behind a hill and it was moving off as her friend got there. And he, as he saw it moving behind the hill, 
he positioned himself so he was ready to take a picture when it came out and when it came out this is the picture he got he just, I guess he just got it and got out of the area but I don't know what it could be that looks it like doesn't a look like gorilla. a, a Bigfoot like that gorilla. we're used to seeing it has a snout yeah. but it's not a bear no it's not a bear he saw it walking away wow. but there are reports of a dog man too so maybe right. this is the dog man that everybody talks about Wow. I don't know what that is, but there's three <laughs> pictures. They're all the same. It's just zoomed in. Zoomed in. Okay. Then this one here, I zoomed in on the first one, and I'm going to zoom in on it even more for everybody. Yeah, it looks like a gorilla a lot. Wow. I'm zooming in for everybody out there in... Uh, we know bears can walk on their on their uh, hind legs, but... That's not a bear. As we saw in the videos. I don't... That's not a bear. I can tell you right now, that is not a bear. <laughs> Um, now people are going to go, what's well, a person in a suit? Well, uh, you know, we don't know the circumstances on this particular incident. You know, we don't know where they're at, how many people are involved. Um, you know, I don't know. I can't tell you, but there you go. Well, I mean, See, uh, pretty weird. Yep. Be- a bear would be narrower in the shoulder area thing. They, they wouldn't be that big up yeah, you know, right there. I, I, that just looks like a it's gorilla amazing. to me. Um, so, but I, again, you know, we don't know. Huh, you know the the circumstances on this photograph. You know all yeah, we can all do. A couple sentences. Yeah, all we can do is show it to you guys and just let you know the things that are happening out there that mainstream media is not telling us. Stuff like this is happening all the time. Photographs are coming forward um, from people because you got you know people are up in the mountains in the wilderness all the time, and I'm sure there's a lot more where this has come from. It's just that. You know they're they're afraid to put it out there because they're gonna get yeah you know t- talked bad about and ridiculed and and I'm hoping that you know sh- more shows like this people will come forward and that's what's been happening so um, you know our intent here is to show you guys and you guys make your own decisions I know there's a lot of people out there who still don't believe and will never never believe until we find a body. Okay, there's a lot of people who didn't believe until they had to believe when they were staring right at it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just, it takes that. That's all it's going to take is they have to witness it for themselves, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, people, the same thing with UFOs. You know, you, people go, well, I've never seen one and I'll, I'll go to them. When was the last time you looked up in the sky? <laughs> you're looking and down at your phone. You're looking down at your phone, <laughs> you know, and, and, and they shut up and they go, well, that's your problem. You're not looking up. You know, you're probably walking from your home to your car at 7 o'clock at night, and you're looking at your phone, and all of a sudden there's something black just going right over you, but you will never know until you look up. So people, they don't make a sound. Yeah, people need to look you'll up. never man. look up again. Yep. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> never go outside again. Yeah. <laughs> right on. So. You know, like, if anybody does get good pictures or video or audio, they can always go to our like page oh, yeah. and contact us. And and you can be a part of the show, you know. We'll put your stuff up and talk to you. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to. It has to be real, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Please try not to pull the fast ones. You know, we do have uh, our forensic expert, uh, Mickey Burl. And any time that I get a picture, I just forward it over to him. And I want to say ninety-eight percent of the time, he'll come back and say, "Dude, this is uh, photoshopped." Uh, He can tell. Because he's a computer whiz genius, and he works for the uh, police department. I'm not going to tell you which one, uh, but he can tell me what is real and what is not. Yeah, and he's a crime scene investigator. Yes, he's also the yeah, one. So he to, will find you out if you send us. He's also the one to, who uh, swabbed for the DNA off right. the windows we'll do of my background truck. Background check on you too. <laughs> <laughs> Dang straight. So yeah, that's funny. Right on. So all right, what else, Mister? That's it. That's it. All right, we're keeping it short because uh, you know we have somebody yeah, coming, coming up. Good show coming up. Yeah, I, I got a feeling it's going to be another one of those shows. So all right, Danny, thank you very much, dude. All right. Okay, we'll see you see next you, Danny. week. Danny. We'll see you. See ya. Not yet. So, all right. Um, okay. So, for all you guys who watched our show last week, uh, I just want to thank da- David Polites uh, for coming on uh, last week. We broke all kinds of records uh, for viewership, and I think uh, David was very pleased as well because um, I think he sold some books. So, and the book was good. I mean, that, it's know, a really good book. Yeah, um, and all four books. Again, you know, if you guys. Haven't didn't even listen to our show last week. We have them archived. Please go back and watch it. And if you want, go and purchase his books. 
Um, don't go to Amazon because you'll be playing three thousand dollars for one of his books, and I don't think you want to do that. So, um, canammissing.com, I believe, is his website. Can am c a n a m missing dot com, and that'll get you to his website. So, okay. Um, our next, the what we got coming up is uh, his name is Steve Pierce. For all those. Has, Everybody remember that movie, Fire in the Sky? Let's go, everybody up. Raising your hands. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, I was living in Los Angeles at the time by myself, and I remember this movie came out. I went to the theaters and watched it. Um, I think this is probably one of the most uh, recognized abduction story out there to this day. They, uh, Travis Walton, you know, he, um, him and some uh, loggers, were out logging, and I believe it's uh, in, I don't know, anyway, anyways, well, um, it's a great story, um, and it's, I think it's, it's, it's a real true story, and it actually happened. Why? Because the loggers, his friends, who witnessed Travis Walton being abducted, actually all took a lie detector test twice, and they all passed with flying colors twice. So, if that happens, then you know they witness something, and they all witness something together. Um, so, um, now, <clears throat> Steve Pierce. For all those who watched the movie, Steve Pierce was played by um, El- 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 Elliot from E.T. Obviously, he was all grown up now. And um, Steve Pierce decided to write a book not about Totally the whole abduction, per se. I mean, obviously he wrote about the abduction because he was there. But it is, it is a book about his life, what happened before the abduction, and what has been happening after. He has, um, this book that he wrote, which is right here, came out last year. All right, we're talking just recent. He only made 60 copies or 50 copies. And he did it out of his own pocket, his own money. He doesn't have a publisher. He did it out of his own money, out of his, you know, out of his, he had his own money, and he did it because he felt that people needed to know about what was happening with him. Um, after actually, he, you know, things have been going on with him that I, I read the book when I got it in the mail the other day, and I read it in one night because it's only 130 pages, not very long, but wow, and he has been actually, I don't think he's actually told anybody or any other interviews about the book itself. And we're going to do that for the first time tonight. And we're going to talk about the book. Uh, he didn't want to talk about the book first, but I talked him to it. And we're going to talk about what's been going on with him. So so we're going to go ahead and get Steve, Steve Pierce on the line. So um, right now what I want to do is he did, he went under hypnosis. Um, you know, hold, hold on, hold on, Emerald, hold on a second. And now uh, what I want to do is... Is uh, he did a, uh, he was under hypnosis about the actual um, Travis Walton abduction. So what I want to do is I'm going to play you the audio of him on the couch and the hypnotist doing regression on him. So here we go. You're driving. And where are you sitting? In the back. What's that? Dwayne says it's the moon. John says it's not the moon. Kyra mm-hmm. says it gets closer. Alan says it's the spaceship. There's something hovering in the air. Travis mm-hmm. gets out. They got him. What they, they got him. Steve. They got him. Listen to me. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. <laughs> Just report what you're seeing. Just report what you're seeing. Tell me what's happening. <laughs> Listen to my voice. They got him. <laughs> okay, just tell me. Just tell me. Verbalize it. You're right here. You're safe. You're just telling me. Report it. <sighs> you're safe. 
You're safe. Uh, I came out and got him. And where are you? Are I'm, you still in the truck? I'm in the pickup. Hauling. And what do you mean they got him? How did they get him? They saved him. Like him out and he... Do you see Travis? Yeah, he's on the ground. Okay, Steve, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. You're doing fine. You're safe now. Just they got him! Steve, listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. You're doing fine. You're safe now. You're just recording it. Just record it. He's on the ground? He's on the ground. And you're still in the truck? We... They got him. They got him. We're in the truck. Remember? Mike's leaving. Mike's taking off. Okay, you're in the truck still? Yes. 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 Okay, take a deep breath. Remember, you're just... Me. You're just reporting it. Everything came out fine. He's dead. See? Travis, Travis is, is dead. Travis is dead. All right, get him on. Wow, I got goosebumps. Me too. <laughs> that, that's scary sounding. Whew. Okay. Let's you get imagine Steve. that happening to you. Whoa. All right. So we're going to get Steve Pierce on the line, guys. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to talk to him. And uh, he's going to give us some information that probably you have never even heard of before, ever. And uh, we're going to talk about the book. All right, Emerald's got him. There we go. Okay, here we go. Steve! Hey, Steve! Yeah. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yeah. All right. Hi, Steve. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Appreciate it. Are we on? Yeah, we are on yeah, right now live. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I appreciate you coming on. I I, I know it, it's been hard, uh, you know, from all the stuff that's been happening to you, um, and I appreciate you coming on because I think people need to hear your story, man, um, and people need to know that this stuff is for real, and people... Um, need to really just open up and um, and listen. So, so where are you at right now? I heard you were going to Graceland. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in. Uh, you're at. The, uh, did you go visit uh, Elvis's pad or what? Yeah. <laughs> did you go? Or did you go that other day or what? No, we're not leaving until in the morning. Oh, okay. Did you go? Did you go visit the the compound or what? Well. I live in Wyoming. We got it's a long way to there. Right. Right on. So okay, all right, uh, Steve. Um, we just finished playing the regression, or the, when you got hypnotized, um, and we just listened to that right now. I let everybody listen to that, and that was some pretty scary stuff, man. We all got goosebumps in here just listening to that. Um, when did you write this book? It says 2013 on it. Um. And with with my ex-wife. Okay, and do you remember what month was it? Like the beginning of the year of twenty thirteen, or? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's been going on um, with you, uh, in and in, in, in you wrote in this book. Now you only put out fifty copies. Is that right? Um. Yeah. Because I wasn't gonna release it. Okay. So, so then you do you put out the fifty copies just for like friends and and people in the in the UFO, you know area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. I want to. Uh, yeah, but 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 they were going to do a um do a remake of it. I think. Okay. So you you want to you want to redo the book then? Well, um. Uh, you, you know, I, you know, I, yeah. you know, we can probably help you with that. And I told you with that, you know, I told you over the phone a couple of days ago. So we'll, we'll, uh, again, we'll talk about it later, okay? Yeah. Okay. Right on. All right. Now, is it cool? Well, I'm, I'm only here to talk about Travis Walton. I mean, about the fire in the sky. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Um, I was reading the book, and. 
there was uh, a spot on there where you know after he got abducted and yeah. um, and everybody went up to the spot and you were not there it was um you know it was mike and i don't remember who else but they said something to you that i don't think anybody knows that there were a couple of people there that were taking readings with geiger counters is that right yeah that's what they told me um that morning when they went out there i went out the back door and i hid all day so i did a lot of hiding after that right but 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 uh Mike and they came with Mike and a couple of guys, and, they, and then they just disappeared. They weren't, you know, they didn't know who were. Right. With the guy counting, with the counters. But but they said that there was two people there they never seen, and they were actually using Geigo counters. So yeah. So I'm thinking that's on, that's 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 on. Uh, uh, paranormal witness on the sci-fi channel when they did that uh, thing about us last year. Okay, and uh, and that is that on is that you can is that on YouTube right now or? Um, I don't know. If it, I think it's for sale. Oh, you can buy it. Oh, okay, okay. So when you told the story, then you told Paranormal Witness about that incident because obviously, in the movie, I don't remember seeing that. It's not in the movie, I don't think. No, I don't think it is, because I would remember that. So, does now, who was the one who told you about the two... Well, ge- you got to remember, the movie is not all the way true. Oh, I, mean, I know. It, I, if I you want to see 90% truth, watch Paranormal Witness on the Sci-Fi Channel and find that. It's called The Abduction, and that's more true than anything. Okay. Now, um, do you remember what they were... Did, did Who was the one who told you that those two gentlemen were checking for radiation? Which buddy? Did um, he? John Glett. Okay. Did he did he tell you what they were wearing? I mean, were they were they like government officials? Were they wearing suits? Or because I remember you saying that they didn't even, you know, they were like out of place. Were they? Um, I, I really can't tell you that because okay. I wasn't there. So okay. you're you're asking me questions that that it's only hearsay that I've heard. Okay. Okay, and that and that was from your buddies that they're checking. Okay, that's all right. That's cool. So, um, you've been, um, you actually done, did a couple of conferences with Travis Walton, have you? A couple of what? You've done a couple of, of UFO conferences with Travis Walton, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, a couple oh. of them. The last one I did was a year ago this week. A year ago this week, okay. I'm not, I'm not doing them no more. This would be my last radio show, so... Okay, so, so this is... The only it. reason I came on this time, I was going to back out of it, but you bought the book, so I figured I owed you one. Okay, and I appreciate that, because I think I got the last last three, so... Um, now, I, I know, you, you know, when we talked on the phone, that you didn't want to talk about your personal stuff in the book, just mostly Travis Walton and the abduction. Why is that? Yep. Why is that? <laughs> We're not going there either. Oh, you're, you're killing me. All right. Um, all right. Well, she's um, when ask me any question about fire in the sky, and I answer. Okay. Like so, when, when but if they talk, if, it, if, it, if, if they want to read about me, um, let's see, Mark Johnson. You know who he is? Mark Johnson. No. Mm. He does a radio show too, and okay. he's gonna. Him and my ex-wife are gonna put the book back together, and they're gonna do something with it. Oh, okay, okay. Now, but okay. Well, obviously, you don't want to talk about. Well, is did all you guys like? Is everybody having like all? You know, when you when you guys you guys all thought he was dead, huh? Like, you when know, you saw him. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Say, say it again. You, talk, Wait, you all thought he was dead, right? Oh, I thought he was dead. Oh, yeah. That's why I didn't go back and look for him the next day, because I thought they were going to find a dead body. Huh. Oh, man. Now, when the light zapped him, was the light just like a, just like the movie, a white, bright light? Is that what you saw? Was no, it? no, that's a joke. Was it? No, in the movie, it looked like a spotlight hit him. It was a bluish green light, and it lit up the whole sky. Wow. And hit him in the chest and knocked him back about 15, 20 feet. Did, now, obviously, again, like you said, you know, the movie 
is they they always like to exaggerate a lot so that's understandable so when the light hit travis right away did it like shoot him back or was he like frozen like in the movie it hit him in the chest and it knocked him back about 15 feet okay and then that, that it did, in the movie it shows that i think it shows him that he's hovering in the air or something yeah right yeah. Then, then he shoots him back that ain't how it happened it hit him in the chest and it, he flew back okay then it lit up the whole sky you could feel the energy on your face wow so was it, was it like oh, a, you guys a, you guys could feel the energy so so was it like electrical huh. was that was that it yeah, um, Dwayne Smith, the guy just passed away, and he, he said it sounded like a, um, like, like, like electricity. Okay. How you, you would hear electricity in the old days on the telephone wires. Right, like, you know, it sounded like that, but, um. Like on steroids, though, huh? Yeah. Now. But I heard a beeping, I heard a beeping noise and a loud pitching noise. And maybe the pitching noise, what I heard is what, what they think was the, you know, like lightning. I mean, like electricity. Okay. Okay. Because you know what? I, 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 you know, I do investigations of UFOs, and people have told me that it smells like electrical burns. Like, you know, when, I'm, when something gets fried with electrical, you smell that, that, you know, that smell. You follow me? Who told you that? Oh, well, Somebody I, that wasn't there? No, 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 no. What I'm telling you is, is I, when I've done investigations with people who had a UFO, really close UFO um, you know, situations, they told me that they actually smell electrical in the, in the air. I didn't smell them. You didn't smell anything? No. Okay. I felt, the, I felt it when it went by. You know, when it, when it came out and zapped him, you could feel the energy. Wow. So... You know, obviously, you know, you guys took off right away. And I would have been, I would have too. You know, I mean, that would have scared the you-know-what out of I me. I didn't take off. I wasn't driving. No, I know. Well, my, well, obviously, yeah, you weren't driving. But who was, Um, I mean, but everybody was pretty much dead. Let's, get, let's go. Let's go. He's dead. He's dead. So, obviously, you know, y'all t- y'all took off. I mean, I I would have done the same thing. I mean, um, now, it, it's when... All right, let, let's skip that part. Obviously, we all know what happened. Um, you know, you guys saw the light come from. You know, you guys, uh, you know, ascended on it, and you know, Travis got out. Um, the time now. Obviously, all you guys took lie detector test, right? Yeah. And you guys all passed all of it. All of it with flying colors. Yeah, we 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 all passed it except for Alan Dallas. He didn't finish his. He got mad because. Now, yeah. No, go ahead. He he he, he got mad and got up and, and was that the after that? The, that the, okay, call him back. <laughs> I wonder if he just hung up. Maybe you pissed him off. What? Why? Nah, it sounds like he was it's getting all nervous. I think he was getting yeah. nervous, huh? Yeah. That, that, you know, some people have a hard time, you know, when they, they, they have something happen to them mm-hmm. like that. And then they have a hard time. I mean, even though it's been, what, 20-something or 30 years, they it has they have a hard time, you know, talking about right. it. Because it it, um, it brings back all the emotion, you know. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's going on with him right now in this book. Right, yeah, that okay, he didn't want to talk about. That he didn't want to talk about. He's not answering. Okay, uh, uh, looked yeah. like Steve pretty much called it and hung up because I don't know what that part, why he you know didn't want to talk about you know him not finishing. I think that's a, just a traumatic experience within itself. Well, um, and I know, I know that um, talk right into it. He he had problems with the cops were like zoomed in on him. Because he was the youngest one. Right. The, I mean, I'm talking about Steve Pierce. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to break him. They are trying to say they, they killed Travis right. Walton. Right. Well, and, they, and they really tried to break this well, guy. Well, let me man, tell you something. You know. In this book, and I and you know, I'm, 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 I want to talk about what's in this book, but not into great detail. Right. Because right? I don't want to upset him. All right. Um, but 
um, while Emerald is trying to get him back on the line, guys, and he's not answering, so obviously he hung up and he doesn't want to talk anymore. Um, I, I I don't know why. I don't don't know why he's tripping like that. I mean, um, you know, Travis Walton is is going out there and telling his story. Obviously, Steve Pierce did not have the, you know, was not abducted, but all the rest of those log log all the rest of the guys in that truck were hassled um were made fun of were ridiculed for a long time um this has been going on for steve for a long time in this book um and i don't see i, I don't want to you know it it's let's just say the government has been on his butt okay has been on him big time um that and that and a lot of people made fun of him yes and I, mean, I don't know what that's something that doesn't bother me you know right i mean we do it we get made fun of like crazy and it's like that's on them not me right you know and i, and I, I don't know why people worry about what other people think so bad you right know? right but only the he you would think that um, it would make you mad enough, like having the government after you and everybody making fun of you, instead of like, uh, you know, I don't like say cowering, but only that's kind of like how it is. I'm sure, like I said, you guys, he's yeah. probably he's hurt. Yeah, he's, um, he went through this traumatic experience. Well, yeah, but but he's been he's him. actually done some interviews yeah. for the past but year. You year. don't think he's tired of it? He doesn't do very many. Tired of the questioning, though, after everything that happened. Uh, well, see, that's why you know when I talk, when I spoke to him over the phone, um, I wanted to get into this book, and and then he said, "Well, no, I just want to talk about the the case itself, right?" Well, you can only go so far and just talk about the case because if we all saw the movie, well, then it's pretty much all there, but there's also a lot of it that didn't really happen. But you could pretty much, um, what? Danny would like you to read the book because you have two and a half hours more to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but we want everybody to buy the book. You can't read the book. Well, you anymore. can't buy the book anymore. There's no more. Oh, oh, yeah, but the people that we're sending it to. Well, know, those are the only two people who are going to be able to know what's go what really happened. You know, um, let's just say there was this one gentleman in here um, that he speaks about that a lot of people know who he is uh, and and he offered him Steve Pierce 10 grand to come out and say it was a hoax right yeah wow. okay he came out actually more than twice okay to and say here I'll give you 10 grand the guy actually went to his house and knocked on the door and yeah. said he I have 10,000 bucks if you say it's a hoax if you say it's a hoax well he you know Steve Pierce yeah. almost said okay yeah. but you know he didn't because this was the truth and he didn't want to hurt Travis Walton because you know it, it, you know Travis Walton had a, a, a one heck of an experience and he just did not want to do that and at that point at that time you know Steve Pierce told uh, in the book that you know 10 grand back then is a lot of money and he you know was hurting for money he you know it, back then when when he was out about um, he actually, in another, he, he's been interviewed quite a bit. Yeah, and he doesn't say a lot. I no, mean, he's very all quiet. Of he's them, he's he very shy. Like, like I was trying. Say, I, I, I kind of yeah. knew that's where you know what was going to happen tonight because yeah. he's a very quiet, shy, shy person. All right, and and I, I didn't think he was going to just hang up and that's it. Um, I thought we were going to be able to go even further, but. You can only talk so much about the abduction case, you know, because we all know it by heart. I do. I've yeah, seen the movie too. many times. All right. So, um, but what I really wanted to talk about was I mean, the this stuff. One of my favorites. I I've oh. watched it. You know, all the interviews. Art Bell. I mean, I I've saw all the stuff on it and listened to the everything. And and you, the the thing is, he has his own. I mean, he only wants to talk about this one little piece, and he has his own. Uh, separate um, experience and other 
more right There's experiences that really needs to be known i mean uh, yeah. if i mean it really needs to be known because this is not just happening to you steve pierce this happens to a lot of people we we talk to abduction people all the time and they have all these problems and this needs to know that this happens it really does i mean it by you bringing that out um it helps all the other ones to come out too and and we 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 have a three hour one with those guys from court right, yeah. and they continue to this day to be abducted and have problems. And we got them on uh, chasing UFOs. I mean, that stuff that is happening to him needs to get known. You know, I can't. Right. Yeah, but coming yeah. from that standpoint, because I mean, I could see where he's coming from. I would not want to be a poster child for something like that. And well, he's not. He would. Well, he would no, be like everybody else, but. Especially yeah. him being at that age when it happened, right, him yeah. being that young, he probably got the worst of it. He did. They that's absolutely what I'm did. Like, yeah. That's. I mean, they, 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 he was seventeen or something. They tried to break him. Yeah, that's you not. Know, they were trying to hurt him. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So uh. Yeah, rats. Okay. Um. <laughs> that's uh, a bummer. Yeah. I. So wait. I'm uh, sure we have people that don't know what happened. I'm one of those people. What happened? Oh, well, okay. Um, uh, read the book. No, I'm uh, just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. <laughs> Watch the movie. Um, <laughs> loggers, uh, I, oh, okay. Um, Travis Walton uh, and several friends of his were up logging. Uh, they had a contract to go up uh, in the forest and to basically clear a bunch of trees you know literally cut them down and move them out of the way for i guess it was for a contract and they were working and during the night they were done and they were driving in the dark or, you know on the on the hill like if we were going up to yeah. the spot you know through, you know through the redwoods and or the forest and the you know all that and all of a sudden they see um, a very bright red light in the in, in the distance and it, they, at first they say well you know what is that the sun is that a forest fire and they, you know trying to figure out what this thing is and then they come on it and they see the ship it's just hovering and um travis walton um decided to get out of the truck and go right underneath the ship because he was he was that type of person you know what the heck is that that is so cool and he goes underneath and he's looking at it and you know the guys in the truck are saying get your get in here now get it you know they're yelling at travis get in here get in here and Travis is going, you know what? It's not doing anything. And then all of a sudden, it a, a light hit him. In the movie, it was a bright white light. It hit him and knocked him way back there on the ground. And that's when the the guys, all the guys in the pickup, were screaming. And he did got he's dead. He's dead. So um, the driver, Mike, who said, who got out of there, and they left him there. But in the movie, um, you know they. They stop, and they come back, and he's gone, and the ship is gone. So there's no sign of him. They look everywhere. They couldn't find him. It's gone. So they go back down to the, to the town, and they're tripping out. You know, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, what do we do? What do we do? And um, they called the, the town sheriff, and he came, and they told him what happened. And um and then the sheriff they went looking the sheriffs yeah, went looking they went looking the, f the next Couldn't day find they him. went looking the next day with a bunch of people at the spot and nothing there's no markings nothing he's gone the ship's gone and and so the sheriff decided to call out of, out of the, the town for more help um and they they sent you know um somebody from law enforcement from another town who questioned them and and he didn't believe him, and he pretty much said, you guys killed him, right? You guys killed him. And they were trying to tell the loggers, you know, you guys all killed Travis. What happened? Was there an accident? You know, where's the body? Because, you know, you just, that body just doesn't disappear. And obviously you go up with Travis, and then you come back with no Travis. And um, so, you know, they're trying to break him and to tell him, yeah, you know, he's dead. But they're saying, no, this is what actually happened. And they tell, they're tell they told them it's the ship you got abducted and they're all you know you're out of your mind and so the law enforcement officer from another town since he has connections uh wanted them to do a lie detector test polygraph test and they all were debating you know they they can easily manipulate manipulate those things to make it you know make you 
you know, make you sound like you're guilty. So they decided to do it, all of them, they all passed, all right? And in the movie, it says that uh, they did it again, and they did it again, and they all passed. And, you know, a couple days go by, and all of a sudden, he, Travis Walton shows up on the side of a road near the town. And that's when he basically, you know, comes back, they find him, and, and he thinks it's only been a couple hours, but it's been several days that he's been missing. Like five days. And, um, and uh, so they think that the whole team, the whole crew did all this for money, for fame, to put it all as a hoax, right? Uh, but in the movie, it's coming from Travis Walton's perspective of what actually happened in the movie. I guess you would have to read the book. Since it's Travis wrote the book, you would have to read the book to see exactly what happened. Because just like Steve Pierce said, that the, when you watch a movie about a situation that happened in real life, a lot of times they, they, you need a, a, a movie is two hours long. So you need to add stuff into a movie to make it two hours long. So you're always gonna add stuff just to beef it up and to make it more interesting and more exciting. And that's why Steve Pierce said that, you know, that, you know, what you're looking at the movie didn't really happen. So he just said, paranormal witness, and I remember them doing a, a, an episode on him and the whole abduction. Um, so if anybody out there can go and watch paranormal witness with him in it, that is pretty much going to be the exact whatever happened happened uh, and that's what he, Steve just said but in the book let's just say even to this day something is still going on with him um, government related but also yeah, um, let's just say he's been visited and it's been happening for a while all right and that's what's scaring him big time and um, and the book is really good. Like I said, I read it. It was only 130 pages, uh, and I read it, you know, in a couple hours because it was that good. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, you guys. You know, I tried to keep him on as long as I could, um, but I can only do so much, man. If he doesn't want to speak, he doesn't want to speak. I thought, because like I said, I text him, and I wanted to speak about the book, and he said, you know, your call. And that's what he said to me. So, so I thought I had a go-ahead on the book. Um, and I guess it's not going... And, and I guess, you know, obviously, like you just heard, he did not want to talk about the book. Well, some some people, you know, they, they can't handle it. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? PTSD? Is that, is that what they call it? You know, Post-traumatic they have, stress disorder with war. Yeah, and you have these... You have a traumatic thing, and you... Some people can't... They lose their complete memory of it. It scares them so bad, they don't remember you know they they suppress the memory their their mind puts it away like a lot of people that get uh oh abducted they they have such traumatic thing while they're in there their brain just locks it out you know and that's why they have to be hypnotized right. <clears throat> now you know? i talked i told alan uh no alan hasn't read the book cuz it, it cuz it just came with me um Hold on. Something just came over my mission. Hold on. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. You, know, you know what's cool is... I don't know. Maybe it's not cool. Uh, but really, these kinds of things... You know, I mean, this happened in like the 70s. But this kind of thing, the, the UFOs, the abductions, um, the Bigfoot sightings, uh, all this kind of stuff, it seems like it's on the increase now, all of a sudden. I mean, it, more and more people are seeing them. More and more people are getting abducted. I mean, it, it, it's kind of crazy right now. I just, um, last night, uh, a friend on Facebook, um, I guess he was talking to Steve or via Facebook messaging. And um, and right now, he, he just sent me a message that he deleted me from his friends list. And I don't know what happened. So I'm going, what? So... He de deleted him from his friend. Um, I wonder if he de deleted me as well. Let me see. Mm. Where would it be? Oh my gosh! I don't see it here. He probably did. He's probably no, no, it's still there. Um, let me see if. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. What a trip. Okay. I'll have to find out. I'll have to go back in and see if he deleted me, deleted me too. Um, so, um, you know, I offered him to put in contact with somebody that could put his book out because, you know, he did this out of his own pocket. He said he told me last night he spent 600 bucks and printed 50 books out. And he um, did that just for, I guess, his friends and, and maybe people in the industry. Um, but obviously something is scaring him and I, I don't know if it is what I think it is or I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I I still got two books to give away, you guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, right now, because there's a leeway, uh, a leeway, um, a delay, a delay, in, a delay in the Art Bell side, um, what I want to do is um, caller number. Just do it. It's at 6.05, the 10th caller. Okay, so, in 10 so minutes, everybody look at your cell oh, phone. okay. That sounds good. Like at 6.05, we'll start taking calls. The 10th caller wins, right? Yeah. Okay, so okay. Um, and, and we're going we're gonna to go. I got the atomic time here. So everybody time, you're going to be looking at the uh, time on your cell phone. All right, so at exactly 6.05, start calling. Minutes, so, right? so when that number goes to 6.05, then everybody needs to start calling. Oh, what number? What phone number? <laughs> Area code 559-287-5555. Five, five, Again, area code 559-287-5555. Five, five, the last four numbers represent the letters UFOS. That is also my 24-hour paranormal hotline. Um, used to be a UFO hotline, but now it's a paranormal hotline because I have people calling from all over the world talking about different subjects, and and uh, so it's a paranormal hotline now. Um, I would appreciate it though if you do call me, call me when I'm not asleep, I, and that's six oh five Pacific time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for all those around the world, <laughs> um, and and that's like what uh, we're at. It'll be about eight minutes or something like that. Right? Yeah, we're, we're at uh, now seven minutes and 40 seconds. All right, so I got the atomic clock here on my desk. So, so bummer. I really wanted to talk about the book, guys, because I said, oh, crap, this stuff needs to be told. Um, I mean, we, uh, for me, I think, I mean, it, he doesn't want to talk about it, but his book is out. But he published a book. Yeah, so I I'm mean, sure you we talk should about just talk about the, the book. book. I mean, really, truly. Okay. I, I don't see. Right. I mean, uh, th you make sense. That makes sense. That I mean, it, sense. It, we have it. I mean, we we could have never called him and just bought the book and talked about the book if we want. True. You know what I mean? True. And, right. and that, we're not. I don't mean any disrespect to the guy. Right. But only we kind of he kind of put us in a spot. I mean, if anything, we should be a little bit mad at him because he put us in a spot. Right. And and we were trying to be like respectful to him. And, and you it know. is what it is. Like I said, yeah. I'm sure he's tired and sure. he's frustrated with it. But he did put the book out, so right. I mean, it the, it's readily available, That's and right. I'm sure you could find a synopsis of it online. For those that do have it, they always post it. Really? So okay. Well, anyways, all right. Well, um, yeah, there there's a couple of things that I just only heard about, and like um, he has he sees shadow people. Yeah. Um. It it's he's now actually. Uh, and, and and I don't know exactly how far afterwards, but he started getting visited, and he's now uh, Steve is getting abducted, basically. And so he's getting abducted. He, he is, yeah, Steve. He's actually getting abducted. Hmm. Uh, now, my question is, I wonder if this is happening to all the other guys in the crew, if they're all being abducted now. That was, that was going to be one of my questions to him. Yeah. I mean that what I mean not giving anything away, but uh, like we haven't heard for anything from the from the other guys. You only hear from only Travis Walton basically, and this guy, right? And um, okay, well check it out. Um, I wonder if any of them got the you know what scared out of them as bad as him, and that's why you don't hear. Well, you know what them. he he went in hiding for a long time, yeah, yeah. and he just finally came out. 
uh, because of this whole thing. You know, he wanted to start a new life, and 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 uh, and um, you know, so um, what was in this book that I found interesting is um, and when they were up looking at the spot after the day after when you know when they're trying when they, they took the sheriff back and a bunch of people and they're like looking when he said that there was two guys with two guys with you know Geiger counters well supposedly one of the loggers one of the guys in the crew walked up to one of those guys and um, they were asked him what are, you, what are you doing and they basically said what they were doing and the guys got the guy counter and pointed at the guys and they were not you know there was no radiation at all coming up but they said well what about our hard hats and they brought out their hard hat and it took off it was readings on the hard hats so the hard hats were all radio had radio uh, radiation oh, they didn't wash the hard hats like they okay. took showers and changed clothes, right? And it was oh. a, so know. different, different clothes, right? But the hard hats got both all both of them got readings when they did the hard hats. Whoa! All right, so that's in the book, all right? So that means that they came in contact with something that had radiation. You guys, wow! All right, so that was in the book. Now, a uh, Mister Class was the guy who was offering ten grand. Yeah. To prove uh, to make this guy say it was a hoax, and and that's one of the reasons why I think, like you, you hit it on the head, Alan, that he was the youngest, right. so they wanted to break him first, right? Um, and uh, and he, he he did they did not break him. I mean, like you said, he even came to the house and, and knocked on the door and offered him ten grand, and and at the time, you know, um, you know, he didn't do it. He didn't do it because you know it. What happened was the truth. So. I saw an interview. I mean, this is a while back, like I don't know, five years or something like that. But some of the that's when and it was Travis Walton, and he and it was actually uh, some kind of con, you know, or or something like that, a gathering for paranormal. And the the reason I even was watching is because it was about Doctor Lear, and and he just passed away. Uh, but only the you know he had he had he talked about the Doctor Lear was talking about the the things implants. yeah implants and he was taking them out and it was really cool and I, I had no idea that Travis Walton was going to be one of the ones that you know speaking so Tra uh, Doctor Lear got on there and and man if you guys really want to see some cool stuff look up Doctor Lear and the implant thing I mean that's amazing stuff I wish he was alive so we could have him as a guest. Right. But um, I know we could get somebody else, though, that worked with them. But anyways, Travis Walton got up next, and at first I wasn't really impressed. You know, the guy was not that good, you know, at public speaking. But only then what he was talking about was really good, though. Like, the information he was sharing was real good. Like, he talked about Steve Pierce a lot because he was the youngest. And he, he said, like, Steve Pierce couldn't stop crying. I mean, it really, really, like, got that guy. You know, the the whole experience really got him. And it, it made me, you know, uh, after I heard about that he was still having uh, UFO encounters or alien encounters and stuff, it, it made me think, like, uh, after, you know, all the things that we know now, it was like, were they after Travis Walton? Or were they after really after Steve Pierce? You know what I mean, like. Right. And they just wound up getting Travis Walton because he's the one that got out of the truck. Right. And they didn't really want him. They zapped him and took him. But only they they may have been the whole thing may have been after Steve Pierce. Well, I, I'm I'm going to read you a little bit from the book. Um, you know, Steve has been witnessing UFOs now for a long time after the incident. Now, I don't know, I don't think before, but after this all started happening. Um, I mean, literally, UFOs would actually come up, like, I'm going to read you real quick. Um, I thought, um, well, I was thinking this 
is not as bright as the one I seen as I was working in Turkey Springs contract in Slowflake, Arizona. It was hovering over me, and I noticed vehicle lights coming down the highway. I looked up at the UFO, and then it was the next morning. So, so he lost. Time. He lost time. All right. Um, well, that's isn't, that, isn't that common with? Oh yeah. Most, oh yeah. Absolutely. Um, so he went. He went. Uh, he went and and had and got hypnotized because he wanted to know what was going on. And he found that he's he's been getting abducted, uh, and they've been doing experiments experiments on him. But there is he he's actually talked about. It. He became a truck driver, and he was basically now driving, you know, all yeah, over the over United the States. Yeah, Just all, you know, and that, that's what he was doing now. And um, I guess there are two sets of aliens, ones that are taking him, but there's there's one alien that actually has been appearing to him and has been appearing to him in his truck while he's driving and so, sort of kind of protecting him. And then he actually asked the alien, you know, why are you guys here with me? What's, and, he, and, and I guess the alien told him, um, when, it, when the time comes, you're going to let people know or something of that nature. So, so maybe... Maybe the time came and he hung up. Ah, you know, I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no I, mean, I, I don't know. I, that, you know I mean, that's I, how it goes. That, right? That's what I was hoping. I thought what was right. going to happen, because supposedly he, they are going to want him to put a message out to everybody. That's oh, that's what oh. he say. That's what he's basically saying in this book. Um, and I was hoping that. You know, maybe I don't know if it's if it's happened yet. Maybe that maybe it has happened. Maybe they told him what's go- coming in the near future, and that's what's got him scared. I don't know. Well, I, I know one thing: if he's listening right now, um, or listens to this later when it's in the archives, we could help you. And then we don't have to do it on the show. We're not just hosts. We're, we also are investigators, and we talk to a lot of people, and we have a lot of experience in this field, that, that, and we can help you. Believe me, we can. I just want to put that out there to him, you know, that we're not making fun of him, and we believe him, and we can help you, and not just selling books either. We got a winner? Yeah. Got a winner. Yeah, we got a winner. What's the name? What's your name, sir? Steve Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> what? He wants to win his books back? No. <laughs> you don't want it to go. Okay. okay. Who do we got here? Hello? Hello? Oh, we got we got a winner. You guys stopped calling. Who's this? It's Dallas. Yo Ho family. Where? Dallas. Yo Ho family. Oh, jeez. Hi, Dallas. <laughs> it's Hi, been a Dallas. while. How's it? Good, How man. How are you guys doing? Good, <laughs> good. Glad you won the book, man. Right on. Oh, thank you, guys. Okay. Well, take care. All right. All right. You see too. ya. Don't hang up. Okay. Don't hang up, Dallas. Um, Hello? All right. Uh, we got a winner, you guys. Stop calling, please. We got a winner. Do all right. second winner now? No, not no? yet. Not oh. yet. Not yet. Hold off on the second book. Yeah. Uh, everybody got to stop calling so she could actually talk to <laughs> Dallas yeah. to get his information. And it's funny that uh, one of the guys in the book's name is Dallas. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's why I was freaking out when oh, you were like, hey, what? the guy in the book won the book. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Um, so go, if you guys can, and, and watch the episode of Paranormal Witness on at the Sci-Fi put out not too long ago. If you can find it, go for it. Though. Um, there's, so, there's tons of information on this thing. I mean, even I get Ro- I have Roku instead of cable because I don't like paying cable. But only there, there's channels on there, and I and there's all kinds of stuff on this uh, on this actual case that, that uh, you can watch for free, and YouTube's now. loaded with it, hundred thousand something hits on that. Whoa! I just I was just notified that um, he pretty much killed his Facebook page. He turned it off, killed it. See that that you know he isn't really acting. Um, much different than a lot of other oh, people we know. Has not found. He just took. He just wiped out his Facebook page. You guys, you know, a lot of people wow. that get abducted get like that. They they get when they they get scared. 
I mean, when you get hounded by Men in Black and these other entities that are not nice. It's gone. Content, yeah. content not found. He just totally erased his uh, Facebook page, guys. So he's gone. That's it. You guys heard the last of him on this show as much as we got out of him, which is not nothing, actually. But... Um, yeah, I just went to his we Facebook. Got a couple of books. I, no. I just went to his <laughs> Facebook page and he turned it off. He completely deleted it, so there's no more Facebook page on him. Yeah, see, like in the chat, they're saying he's stunting. You know, like making a stunt that makes that gets more publicity. And and, and it very yeah. might well be because he just said too that um, his, I don't think so. His ex-wife and um and and somebody who did his last interview are going to go in it together to republish this book. Well, they they can republish it. I'm not helping them. Right. Well, you know, know I, mean, if you I, stuck I had around I, and talked to us. I would help. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, Steve, if you're listening, we had one of the top people that we could have got this to, and you would have paid absolutely nothing, and they would have done all the work. But if you, that's what it's about, again, I don't think so. But I don't know. But anyway, so um, since you were ma- mes- mentioning Ruku, a lot of people just uh, a couple people t- told me this past week. That um, chasing UFOs is now on Netflix. Sweet. Okay. So that people are for the first time watching the episode that I was in for the first time and going, dude, we just saw you on Netflix on on chasing UFOs on you know that episode. I'm going, uh, yeah, it's been out for a while. Well, yeah, I mean, you could watch it, but you had to pay a dollar ninety nine for Netflix. No, I mean, oh, that, oh, like oh, if oh. you went to YouTube or anything. Oh, no, it was, no, 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 no. That's chasing your phone. That's free. It's, it, matter of fact, it's on YouTube right now. Is it? Yeah, you can watch uh, Dirty Secrets, the uh, Chasing UFOs episode. You have two books, right? Yeah, not, not, yeah, we're not gonna, no, not yet. We'll, every, we'll let everybody suffer a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe for a little while. Okay. Six forty. Um, Six forty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, at the forty minutes after the hour, where whatever right. hour you are at, whatever time zone you are at. 40 minutes after this hour, we're going to give away the second book uh, from Steve Pierce, Broken in Silence. And here it is. Okay, so, um, yeah, so Chasing UFOs. They, right. they, they bring up, a, somebody brought up a good thing in chat. Like, um, they say, if you had any idea how much the public has been lied to about a UFO and alien stuff, man, people would freak. They would. People would freak. Uh, you, the public is being lied to so, so bad. Mad, yeah. And they use TV and they put out all this crappyola stuff that's crappyola. When and then it, it makes it where like when you look at a video or pictures like what we were talking about earlier with um, you know send us real stuff because there's so much fake stuff you almost can't. It, it's hard to, to distinguish what is real and what is not anymore, especially on YouTube. And, you know, there's a lot of videos out there, and, I, I, you know, there's a lot of people who put videos on my well, on my wall, and that's cool and everything. But, you guys, there is uh, there are a group out there called Third Phase of Moon. Those guys are a bunch of hoaxers, all right? So we, so, have, we have somebody on chat that wants to call in. Okay, is go it, for it. And... Uh, so, Am I looking for a specific name? I don't want like 10 people calling in. Uh, Michael Elizondo. Okay. I think I, I hope I said that right, man. All right, Mike, give me a call. What's going on? Uh, so we're going to get a phone call in right now. 559-287-8367. There's a leg, too, remember? Huh? There's a leg. Yeah, it would take a couple minutes for our voice to get yeah. to him. You check, know. check, check, check. I don't know if I'm over-modulating or not, but okay. I used to overmodulate a lot on this thing until I figured it out. So, mm. um, and then now after we finish talking with Mike, if he's going to call in right now, um, we're, we're going to talk about some stuff that's been happening over the week, um, some, in, some some situations that uh, are pretty interesting. That if not that many people caught it, well, we're going to talk about it. But uh, is he going to call? Well, I, I want I want to say something. Um, Jaws passed oh, away. Oh, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. And and I wanted to I wanted to say uh, condolences to his family and and uh, we're praying for you. But he was like the only bad guy in James Bond that never died. Hmm. That that way they could bring him back if they ever wanted to. He could right. like come back and be the bad guy again. 
And I guess they could still well, it would just be somebody. Go big, ahead, go ahead and know. talk about who his name because you just said Jaws, Richard Keel. Richard Keel. Yeah. For all those who don't know, he was in you know uh, some James Bond movies. He was on Happy Gilmore. Uh, it was Mr. Larson, the one with the nail stuck in his head in right. Happy Gilmore. Sure. He was on The Monkees. He was on Wild Wild West. He was in some Clint Eastwood movies. Uh, he was in uh, Cannonball Run. I mean, he was even in some older movies. Uh, the Twilight Zone. Uh, I mean, way back when he was in, on The Twilight Zone. I mean, he, he did, I don't know how many movies and TV shows. And he, and he was huge all over the world. You know, had all, a big old giant heart. And for those who don't know, uh, he resided here in Clovis, California. Yeah. This is was his hometown, basically, actually from Oakhurst. Well, he lived in Oakhurst until he had an accident that made it hard for him to walk. Uh-huh. And then he had to be clo- like me. Closer I lived to. up in the hills, too, and then had an accident. And then now I live in town closer to the doctors and stuff right. like that. You know, you can't take care of the property, you know, so he moved to, to Clovis. Right. So yeah. Richard Keel lived here, and he's actually a very good friend of Ellen's, uh, really close with the family, and it was very abrupt. It just happened all of a sudden. Uh, and, you know, that part of the family is really just blown away that, you know, he, he died all of a sudden. So Yeah, it was sudden. So, okay. Um, so... Okay, well, I guess this guy's not going to call us He said he called four times. Are are you calling the right number? 559-287-8367. No, dude. Phone's not ringing. I haven't gotten anything. Hmm. So somebody's putting a block and they're not allowing you to call in. Boy, that has happened before. That has happened. Especially when we get on these kinds of subjects. 287-8367. Are you calling the right number? He tried again. He's using 559, right? Area code 559. Well, apparently he's not. I mean, is it ringing or what? Asking him. No, he said he called five times. Phone didn't ring over here, dude. No. Nope. Man, that's weird. And I know, you know, he. I guess he was having like, he has experience also. Well, and that's why you wanted to call. Well, uh, apparently somebody is listening to him right now and not allowing him to dial our number, which has happened many times. So We've even lost our signal a few times so talking while, about this. Yeah, so while he's talking about that, uh, or trying to get through still, um, la- Thursday morning sometime, there was a, a very bright light spotted in the Bay Area uh, early Thursday morning. Uh, and a lot of people around here witnessed it. Obviously, the people in the Bay Area witnessed it. They actually got it on, on video. Uh, and it's a very bright white light. Some say it was a rocket. We don't know. But isn't that a coincidence that the following morning, the press got a release, press release from the uh, N- Lemoore Naval Air Base that two of our F A 18 fighter jets crashed in the Pacific? Ah, uh, you think that might. Wow. Okay. Now, that doesn't happen, you guys. Yeah, they do. All right. Two jets crashing at one time does not happen. Could they have crashed against each other? No. I mean, these, we're talking people with experience, and that, that just doesn't happen. Okay, wait. The phone number is 559-287-8367. You have 63. That's Dude, why it's not getting that's through. That's why you're not getting through. So, yeah. all Eight, right. Three, six, seven. Okay, so... um. And and two jets, they said crashed, but they're not giving how they crashed. They both, well, one pilot ejected and they retrieved that body. He's in the hospital. He's fine, but they can't find the other pilot, and he's presumed dead. Tell you right now, fighter jets, two at a time, don't crash. I can tell you right now, something happened to them to make them crash. All I right. agree. I agree. One, you're like, ah, you know, it could crash. But two, two? no, no, that either don't either happen. either they were shot down, yeah. or something brought them down. And it's all in the news right now on the west side. If you want to go look, look, go look. Um, two F eight eight F A eighteens out of Lemoore Naval Air Base. They, they, you know, 
th- they went down and crashed, guys. Really? That doesn't happen. Did so, they give enough information to know if it was um, like around the same time period? They're not telling us. Yeah. It just so happens that this bright white light was seen uh, uh, over the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. All right? So I think they're connected somehow. Will we ever know the truth? No, they're not going to tell us the truth. But I can tell you right now, these two jets did not crash for pilot error. No. I can see maybe one, if that was the case, if it maybe it was landing on an aircraft carrier or whatever, but not for two. And it so happens that day also we were supposed to get hit by that solar storm. Oh. All right, so now you have the solar storm, then you have that bright white object that was seen over the Bay Area, and it's all over the Internet, you guys. You guys can go and Google uh, Thursday morning bright objects seen over the Bay Area or Pacific Ocean. Uh, I have a feeling there's a connection here somehow, and I don't know what it is, but those two jets were brought down, and they did not crash on their own. Uh, so I don't know what happened. So he says he's going to voicemail now. What? That is weird. It's on. That's weird. Are you kidding me? That's what Tell he him to text, and then I could call him. Um, hey, can you text that number, and then Put we'll on, call you? Yeah, do it on yeah. the text chat. That, yeah, text that number. That is weird. That is. Because your I phone's mean, on yeah. it. Your phone was working. Well, of course, you you answered the uh, the, the winner. Are you sure you're dialing the right number, dude? Did if you it type went it to your voicemail. It's 8367, right? Okay, well, did you type it to him? Type it to him. Maybe he didn't hear you say that. I had it typed in. To him. Send it to him if you can. That's weird. Oh, I can't. It's 559. Okay, Michael, the number is 559-287-8367. Three six seven five five nine two eight seven eight three six seven. I want to tell you something really quick before he calls. What happened to me yesterday? And this is pretty funny. Um, all, uh, for those who watch me on Facebook, know that I've been I, I've been telling people that I'm going to be attending my thirtieth high school reunion last night, and you know, I've been telling everybody, you know, that I was you know we, we getting excited and all that kind of stuff. I I have a friend one of my best friends out of high school his name is Steve Lau and he lives in Fremont now and you know we hardly ever talk maybe once a year and that's all by text right well yesterday I was we were me me and my wife you know we sent our son to my grand to my parents house because they were going to take care of him because we're going to go to the you know my reunion and I was just about to start putting on my clothes I'm not going to tell you what I was doing but (laughs) Uh, oh no! Um, I was uh, no, no, not that. That's not. not but no. Uh, and then all of a sudden, my buddy Steve texts me and he says, "Hey, so what are you wearing at the reunion?" And I said, "Oh, I'm gonna be wearing a suit." And he says, "Oh man." He goes, "Okay, well, I guess I'll wear my suit too." And then, a lot of people don't do this, but when he texted me that, he sent over the 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 spot where he was sending the message from. You know how you can send that? Yeah, geolocation. The geolocation. It was Fremont. I'm going, he's still in Fremont. Dude, you're not going to make it in two hours to, for the dinner. And I told him that. And he goes, ha, 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 very funny. And I'm all, dude, you got two hours to get here because here we're about to get ready. And and, I, and and he goes, I'm looking at the flyer. It's next week. And I'm all, what? And I went, so I started going back, and sure as heck, <laughs> the reunion is next Saturday night. But check this out. And I'm going, dude. It goes, oh, my God. We were just, I mean, Cheryl was just about, or Diane, whatever her name is, was about to get into the shower, right? And now we're going to start to get dressed. And we were going to go out to Pardini's where this place is. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my best friend from high school just happened to text me as soon as I was put my suit on. And tell me, so what are you wearing? Like, and then I said, dude, you just saved me from making a fool out of myself because I was about to walk into the, you know, to the place, and all of a sudden, there's, oh my god, because I, you know, things oh have been. God, happening. it's a different reunion. <laughs> no. it, it's like I've been so busy with the set, you know, getting the set ready, and all that kind of stuff. I, I just didn't look at the time. I thought it was Saturday night, and then Steve responded back. He goes, dude, I've been known to call people, or 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 make contact when something is not right. And that just totally blew me away. My buddy from Stephen, you know, Stephen Lau, you know, texted me 
right before I was going to put on my suit to find out what I was wearing. And if he didn't have, if he not, did not do that, my wife and I would have been all dressed up, walking into Pardini's on whatever the banquet room to say, where's the reunion? Yeah, you lucked out. That, Dude, but it's like... But that's not like a coincidence. It's, that's not a coincidence, yeah. right? right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That is like... And then Cheryl, Diane, whatever her name is, was saying that, um, well, you know, maybe he, his wife was getting... was just there at the time and they were trying to figure out what to wear next week. But I'm going, no way, not... I mean, we had literally walked up the stairs and... I was about to grab my suit, and then he texts me out of, no, out of nowhere. Like I said, he doesn't text me. He doesn't. That's a trip. That is a trip. And I swear to God, you guys, that happened. You can ask my wife, Cheryl Diane, whatever her name is, that that actually happened. And now you know, my wife is giving me grief. Like, old man, you don't even know when your high school reunion is. But that is just, that is not a coincidence, guys. That's like... I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But my buddy, Steve Lau, you know, literally, we probably haven't spoken in two years or text in two years. He likes stuff on my wall. But for him to text me and ask me about the reunion, as soon as I, I that just, I just, I just went, whoa. I went, whoa. So, um, next that, Saturday. You know, like, the phone not working for this guy. I wonder if it's going to work for the book the giveaway thing we got 15 minutes to find out that's a trap actually yeah you're right he still can't get through well i mean it's not ringing wow i know he's trying nothing that's a trip okay yeah, maybe it's just because they don't want him to talk to us i have no idea i'm gonna try to call your phone from my phone from the 24-hour hotline mode? yeah okay yeah, call, call my phone yeah <clears throat> we got to make sure it works for sure like the, the bill is paid trust me Yeah, man, we were. We get it works. <laughs> we get cut off. Okay. Like there, this isn't like the first time. No, I mean, no. over the last few years, there was some times okay. where we would talk about this, and we'll lose our whole internet. Okay, um, the phone number again is five five nine cinco cinco nueve. Where's he from? Two eight seven. I don't know. Dos ocho siete eight three six seven. What? Oh, there it is. It's just a test call to see if the phone works. The phone's working. <laughs> <laughs> see? Isn't that weird? Somebody okay, just called to make you. a test test call, and this guy, Michael, can't call that number. That's weird. That is telling me, Michael, that you got something has, true yeah. that's going on with you right now, and they're not letting you call my 24-hour hotline iPhone number. Okay? I'm telling you right now. Cause somebody just did a test call, and Emerald answered it. Um that so you need to okay michael you need to text me and we need we we need to sorry <laughs> <laughs> we need to uh, you need to talk to uh, me we need to contact haunted. each other because there's something going on they're not letting you call us for a reason all right so michael whatever it is that, that you wanted to tell us is definitely serious so okay let's go ahead and continue on uh we got you know 30 minutes left we're only going to do a two hour, two hour show because um yeah, we were going to do three. I, yeah, but, but see... There ain't no way. There's no way, because I you know, was hoping that we're going to keep Steve on for at least an hour to talk to him about his book, but, you know, that, that ain't going to happen. So, um, so okay, um, what I want to do is, again, you know, we get some great stuff on my Facebook wall. For all those who are not friends with me, it's uh, Jeffrey Gonzalez or Sanger Paranormal Society become a friend on my wall I, we also have a like page paranormal central go like that as well two eight seven eight three six seven somebody's right? talking to emerald is that him we got him Hold okay yeah what, what hello michael yeah so what happened hey, michael uh as far as what uh, well as as what i've been through no, no. I, I mean, you you've been trying to call me for the longest time. Oh, uh, um, oh man, I forgot the topic. There's a couple uh, instances that I wanted to uh, basically just speak my behalf on, but um, uh, where are you calling from? Flushed, where you, I got flustered with the calls not being going through or whatever. Right, right. What? Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm from Fresno. Okay. So what's going on, Mike? 
Oh uh, man, uh, not too much, man. But I know that, like, I know this guy Darren. He's like getting on people or whatever. But I mean, I, I feel up back to. I know we're already past that, but back to you know the guy that got cut off. Uh, man, you, I, I get really cool, and I haven't even been through as much as that guy's been through. And <laughs> um, I think I sent you some pictures of a couple of UFOs that I had came across, and I got video that that I think I sent you as well. God, I get so many of that stuff. Um, when when did all this happen? Um, it was uh, no more than a month ago. Um, I seen a group of eight of them. I had pictures of the singled out ones. Um, I had sent you a drawing, and I also sent you a, a video of that that incident as well. Okay, I think I re- I think I remember those. Uh, yeah, where about too. where about in Fresno did you see this stuff at? Um, I see that incident was as far uh, where I'm at on Blackstone and Herndon or um, yeah Blackstone and Herndon it looked like it was coming from like the Woodward Park area more out that way um, they're bright orange solid no blinking and they just slowly came um, like for like my almost my way and then like curved off and just disappeared okay were they um, y- you think they they weren't uh, Chinese candles no I know <laughs> no okay uh, I, I, and, and that's not the only time that I've seen those I've seen um, a couple of other times same as I think but red and I've seen um, I don't, there's this one incident that, that I, I they were kind of above my house I was like okay what what is this and I'm not saying that they were like looking down on me but as soon as I looked or took a step towards the street to you know get a clear view they just went they disappeared okay and like a minute later off to my right they were like maybe a mile or two down and then they just reappeared and kept going at the same place at the same place I'm sorry. Okay, right on. All right, dude. Um, yeah, we get a lot of calls from that area for some reason. Right over the Friant Road, uh, we get we get exactly what you just said. They come out of the ground in that area, and they just go up and and trust me, we get a lot of calls from that area. A lot. You're not the only one. Yeah, and I'm, I don't know. Did you get anything uh, as far as um, two nights ago? Because there was one right above, like where I live now. Uh, same thing, orange. Right, it came out of nowhere. Me and a group of friends had seen it, and we watched it, tracked it. It kind of curved off to the right, which you know, no meteorite or anything gonna do anything crazy like that. And right. it just again just disappeared. Wow. Well, you know what? You got my number. Put that in your cell phone. The next time that happens, you call me as soon as it happens, so that way I can get some people outside and see if they can videotape it for us. All right. Okay. Yeah. Of course. All right. Right on, dude. I appreciate you calling me. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Mike. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you know, also, I, what I want to do is, I forgot about this guy. His name is Casey. If you're listening, um, Emerald, do me a favor. Oh. We have the book. We have the book. And, and at, at, what is it, 40 minutes after the hour, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. After we get uh, called, the, uh, after we get the winner for the book, um, I had a, a gentleman call me from Iowa. And uh, I, I he, he was messing with the Ouija board. Oh, and man. he wanted some help. <laughs> and... <laughs> And um, oh, he went through some stuff that I want to. I want him to, to talk to everybody about, to tell you about the Ouija board. That is not a toy. Don't play with it. I played with one. Okay. Well, damn. <laughs> um, so you know what's uh, weird I'm about hoping Ouija boards, like that they're sold in Toys R Us. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. and uh, sometimes things come true. Well, I mean, it's it's it's. I don't think it's the board per se. It's basically a catalyst. Like, it's... How do I say? It's not a door, but it's the willingness of the people to be like, okay, let's bring something. Because like, the more you're open to it, the more you're going to get. When, when I was... I don't know. I was like 16, maybe. Maybe 15. And my sister, Ginger, that's on you know in, in the chat right now, and my wife, that wasn't my wife, were playing with this Ouija board in the garage and then and uh, they were asking it questions and they asked who is she going to get married and it said me and I just laughed I was just passing through and I laughed ha 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 that's not going to happen you know <laughs> I mean I mean, she was just a friend at that point and I, and I just kept on going um, a couple of years later 
few years later, we were married. <laughs> I mean, and, but only I wouldn't play with them. They are not. They're like that's like a portal. It you could open something up like a Pandora box type thing. You can't stuff it back in the box. That those things can be dangerous. Well, it's not like I said. It's not the board. Well, see, Jeff and Alan are more UFO Bigfoot people, but I'm more. This I yeah. specialize in the ghost and the demons and stuff like that. So I think when you use a Ouija board, it's an invite. It's not necessarily right. a portal, but it's an invite. Yeah. You're saying welcome. You could come into my house. Is yeah. In fact, that is. you know that you that's a good thing that you're saying right there because a lot of people don't know um, a lot of things are invites. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, like they they can. Um, think it's all funny and everything and fun and games and they're really inviting these things right into their life like yeah. there, there was something on facebook earlier um one of, one of our friends does what you do you know is, is uh, sensitive like that too and she was watching this show where they have these little kids and they're they're not really teaching them anything and then they're taking them out uh, into these investigations right and the kids are sensitive, and and they they can see things and everything. And I was thinking, man, that's. The, she was asking what everybody's opinion is, and mine was like, no, man, you know, you could bring this thing home, and you don't even know. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it is. Even adults that don't know what they're doing shouldn't play around. Well, I mean, like, it, like like I say with everything else, it's balance. I mean, you could invite good things, and you could invite yeah. bad things in. It's just how you go about it, what you what you invite but you need to know what you're doing yeah you definitely oh, yeah. do man you shouldn't even play in these things you got to know what you're doing and and i know a lot of people they think because of how many tv shows and everything that it's like oh that is so cool i'm gonna go rent out and do what you know this today it, it's, man, you it's should not be the careful. same <laughs> i mean with the whole like everybody's all into supernatural and stuff like that and i mean i've read books that are basically on the same thing there is a little ring of truth into most of what oh, they're yeah. talking about but the way they're going about it is sometimes it's not the right way to do it no i know so yeah. i mean you have to kind of figure out on your own if you're doing this what works and what doesn't and what you want to stay away from yeah and you definitely want to like do your homework before you start playing yeah it. you know it's not a game no and these things play for keeps some of them i mean the good ones might be cool but some of them they, they play for keeps yeah. forever. You just got to be careful. Be smart. Right. Yeah. Because I've dabbled in stuff that I shouldn't have, and you, yeah, it messes with you. Yeah. And, and that's what I want to talk about when, um, you know, there's, oh, crap, I'm trying to, when the Rothschilds. Um, the Rothschilds. Um, isn't that the guy one for the Rothschilds? Um, I think so, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to I wanna bring something up on the screen here and talk about something. Um this was brought to my attention on my wall. There was an old photograph that was taken with Miss Clinton and one of the Rothschilds, and it doesn't show where this was taken at, but I want to show you right real quick on my screen. I'm going to go ahead. This is the one where he's, she's holding that book. Correct. Right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. It's on the screen now. It's Miss Clinton. Uh, I'm thinking when she was uh, obviously first lady. This is what I'm thinking. And with the Rothschilds. And there was a book that she's holding right there in her left hand in, in near her, uh, on her arm, near the jacket there. And for the longest time, people wanted to, you know how people are really just interested and, and, and want to know what people are reading because it tells a lot about them. So this particular book here, what was facing outward was the back and the barcode and some little images on here well somebody a couple of days ago found out what book that was and they actually put it out and it was and i'm going to show you there's another another copy or another uh um uh shot of the back of the barcode and and the uh, you know the actual just design of the book well somebody figured it out and what it is is a book called Are We Alone by Paul Davies. All right? That's a book that Miss Clinton was carrying under her arm. There it is right there. Paul Davies, Are We Alone? Um, which I find interesting because there are people in high power who are into this stuff. 
Um, so, you know, here Clinton is talking with the Rothschilds, and she's carrying a book. Now, from what I understand, uh, this gentleman here, uh, Mr. Rothschild himself, they're really into the the outer space and are we alone and all that. So they're, they're Illuminati. They're, yeah, so they're not sure if, if he gave her this book because it's awfully weird that she's walking with it and maybe this location is maybe at his house and he gave it to her. But um, but there it is. It's uh, Paul Davies and Are We Alone? Now, Elizabeth, after this came out, and Elizabeth ordered the book and she got the book. Cool. Okay, so she's, right reading, so she's reading it right now and she's going to give us a report on this book. And I'm going to bring her up as soon as that next week. Hopefully, she will uh, be finished with it. And she's going to go ahead and give us a review on this book and tell us why it was an interest to uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, then I noticed something around her, uh, the necklace that Clinton was wearing, and I thought that was kind of unusual. Um, it, just, it just jumped out at me, and I don't know if it's nothing or not, but look at the, the necklaces that she's wearing. And Emerald, if you can take a look at that on your phone too and, and see if... Um, but uh, it, to me, they'll just look like, uh, and I'm not saying Egyptian, but now what's kind of weird, though, is that, you know, President Obama was at Stonehenge last week. He made an unannounced visit to Stonehenge. And what's kind of interesting, too, as well, and I don't know if anybody knows that because it wasn't talked about at all, just on Facebook, I heard. And, um, you know, there's actually pictures of him and a video of him there at Stonehenge. The day after that happened, they came out with information that there's a lot more Stonehenge than there is underground. Oh, I saw that. Like, a lot. A like, lot. five miles or something. Because they were doing the underground penetration uh, penetration of the, uh, mm-hmm. with doing, doing that sonic. And this happened, 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 happened the day after President Obama was there. They made that announcement, which I find kind of interesting. I was going to say, I mean, it just looks like crosses but the band it's on with the beads it, it just doesn't look like your regular catholic cross no it, it, well she's not catholic oh but, okay well then yeah that but, just feeds it but those hold on i got a winner okay got a winner oh we, we got, got a winner, winner. already oh that's cool okay well you know the person she's walking with uh-huh. is probably one of the top um world boss guys that you know they run the world they run the oh, money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They run the oil. Mm-hmm. They run your. They run your internet companies. I mean, this guy's probably, he's probably the guy, the guy. that or his family is like with the reptilian, <laughs> uh, whatever you call them. Right. Uh, what do they call those Nephilim or whatever? I mean, bloodline bad guy. You know the one that, according to like the internet stuff though. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. He's he's the one that's like calling the shots in the world, you know. And what do you think he's telling her when he gives her that book? Right. Yeah. I. You know. Um, so I I just found that interesting that you know our high officials definitely have an interest in this. I wonder, I wonder if that is like he was telling her she could be the next president because they're the ones that call the shots on that yeah. too. We don't vote them. Yeah. That's true. You know, it's kind of, I don't know, that is a weird picture to so, think about. You know. They're all working in cahoots against all of us guys. It's as simple as that. So, um, so yeah, take that for what it's worth. Um, Emerald got a winner. What's the name on the winner? Well, she's typing down the address and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, like I, I apologize that we couldn't get Steve on here longer, but he's the one who who ended the conversation, ended the interview abruptly. Um, so I don't know what's going on with him, uh, but you hit it, heard it from him. Yeah, I hope you're all right, Steve. Really, I mean, I'm yeah. truly, I like care about what happens to you, man. I'm not making fun of you at all. I hope everything's okay and remains okay. Was, I've been working a lot. I'm just, I just um, yawned. I've been working a lot on the set and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know what? We're not gonna have time. I want to talk to Casey. Casey, if you're listening, buddy, uh, let's talk to you next week, okay? Because um, you know we went a little long, 
and uh, I'll bring you on next week and we'll talk about it. Um, next week, uh, you know, there are two passions of mine that I really enjoy, and one is paranormal, obviously, and the second is music. For those who don't know, and I hardly ever bring this up, but uh, I was in the music business in Los Angeles back in the days. I owned a small independent record label. And when I say record label, not a record store, but a record company where I actually signed bands, signed them to a recording contract and, you know, put out a CD, put them on tour, uh, got them radio airplay and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I did that because before I used to be in bands and I you know, played the Hollywood strip and all that kind of stuff and opened up for some decent bands. And the music is still in me. I have I have an ear for music. And the producer who produced all of my got all of my uh, bands on my label. Um, his name is Steven Siebold, and uh, he's a really cool guy. We had, that was probably one of the, one of the best times of my life doing the music with him. I you know I also be used to be a lighting technician. I used to be into lights and all that kind of stuff and. Um, you know, we got along really well, and and I found out he was really into into NASA and outer space and all that. Uh, and so um, he also produced for Berlin Information Society. He's done commercials and the whole nine yards. And and I wanted to bring him on and talk to him about the music business, about what he's doing, and about just about his belief. And, and just to get somebody different on. And so we're going to get Steven Siebold from uh, his, the band is Hate Department. And he's actually released, just released an album with some remixes. And it's really weird that if you go to Bandcamp, uh, the, the, the app and the website, and pull up Hate Department, you can actually purchase his album and give him whatever you want or whatever you think it's worth. So if you think the album is worth ten cents, you can give them ten cents and take the album, or a dollar and get the album. Well, that that that's that's the way he's selling his music, and his music is really good, guys. His music is really good. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and play. Emerald, I mean uh, Elizabeth says that the cross is for the planet of the crossing Nibiru. It's Sumerian. What? That's what that's what she put. In chat here. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh boy. And so that so that says Sumerian of the crossing planet of Nibiru, and the book is Are We Alone? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, the dude is some reptilian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I was right on the necklaces. Thirteen minutes, kid. And uh, and. Um, <laughs> And uh, so there are, those necklaces mean something. So let me play you a, a quick tune from Steven Siebold of Hate Department. I know the name Hate Department sounds weird, so but... I heard another band gave everybody their album. U2. U2, the band U2 um, gave their latest album out for free. And I don't know how and why they did that, but... Uh, yeah, that's that's Oh, hold on, wait. My music. Say it again. Say it again. That was weird when it, when they did that. I was like, I didn't buy this. Like, what the heck is this? It was just in my music. So that kind of freaked me out. Now, I was like, wow, it, they're able to do that. Exactly. Um, and that is through iCloud or? Um, I don't know how they sent it. it. They probably went through your iTunes account and just sent you the music. You know what? I don't even know if I have. I might have it. I don't even know if I did. I did you know, I didn't even check. Yeah. So everybody, look in your music. You might have YouTube the album. So, wow. So you imagine if you have it. And they just sent it out to everybody. And then they bill you next month and no, deduct it out of your bank. It. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, okay, I'm going to play you a quick song from my buddy Stiebel, C- Steven Siebold. Um, the guy is a genius. I used to call him a genius. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a song. I mean, his stuff is really, really good. It's probably going to give us a hit on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably get a hit on YouTube for this. Think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, okay. You can go ahead and play it. Yeah, yeah copyright. But he can give us permission.
Go get his album. Its album is on Bandcamp. Uh, dot com, I believe, is the website, and um, it's uh, the the name of the album is called New Ghost. Ooh. All right, New Ghost. I like it already. So, um, great stuff, and like I said, you just make an offer, and you can buy the album for a dime, for a dollar, for ten dollars, whatever you want to offer for for it, get it. So, it's great stuff. Like I said, I call this guy a genius. He actually. Um, the one, two, three, two band, three. He did. He he uh, produced three bands on my label, and one of those bands won for best uh, alternative band at the 1999 uh, Los Angeles Music Awards, and they won for that album. So, so go out and get it. We're gonna have. So who won the last book? Yeah. Oh, um, her name was Brenda. 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 So. And she appreciates all that we do. Oh, right on. She's cool, too. Where's she from? I like Brenda. She is from Ohio. Ohio. Right on. So, all right. Brenda from Ohio. We're going to send you that book. Actually, Emerald is going to be in charge now because I am yeah, bad. Yeah, Jeff can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. So, I'm going to give her money and we're going to, she's no, going to send off all the books. Me. He's lying. No. He's she, lying. We're going to. Um, I'll probably end up doing that this coming week for you guys. So, <laughs> everybody that has won a book will be getting their book shortly. <laughs> I mean, and we mean all I promise, the books yes. that we yeah. owe. We'll They're be going, going out. out. They were going out. Yeah. So cause we have a stack here that needs to go out. ASAP. So and again I apologize, but I have been very, very busy. So all right. So uh, next week we're gonna have Steven Siebold from Hate Department. Uh, great stuff. And we're gonna talk to him uh, about music and about his beliefs and talk about just him and I and the music stuff that we did while we were in LA. So it's it's gonna be a different side of paranormal but he is into the subject great deal de- dearly and I think we're gonna have fun so we'll have a blast again you know he's produced albums for information society and tearing under Berlin and he actually did a, a commercial for Arnold Schwarzenegger for a TV commercial he did the music for it so um, the guy's a genius that's all I have to say so I can't wait to talk to him it's been a while since I've actually talked to him I, I, I've just talked to him over on texting but you know to actually talk face to face it's gonna be or you know ear to whatever but uh, that'd be fun so all right we got seven minutes left to go um, what else didn't I say uh, looking at my notes which not much because I thought we were gonna have a full hour with Steve and that didn't work out did it um, the solar storm obviously hit last week. Um, sure I, did. I, I, I found out Egypt lost a majority of their power not uh, right around the time this solar flare hit. It's still hit. happening, too. Yeah. I mean, the sun is acting up right now. Ka- uh, Kaylee from Possessed Tranquility was in Seattle, and I told her to go outside, and she actually saw the green. Oh. She, she didn't get to see it. It was just coming in. I told the her Aurora if you can. The Aurora Borealis yeah. is supposed to come lower. We've actually seen it here before. Really? Yeah, in the that, 80s. That's bad. Um, the solar storm thing, you know, everybody says like that that necklace that uh, she was talking about, the Nibiru uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. See, it's everybody, like some people believe Nibiru is coming and some people say it's not coming. And, but only something's happening. Okay, like the sun is really waking up. Um, Earth, the Earth is waking up more volcanoes than ever. Huge, giant, um, vol- you know, volcanoes are like busting loose, like all yeah. over the place, yeah, right? Yeah, they are. The ocean is weirding out. The weather is like off. The jet stream is off, and it would be like. Something like something huge coming in our our uh, solar system and starting to disrupt the you know everything. And I know I don't know if there's a Nibiru or not, but all I know is usually a gravitational force of something huge coming in could have the effects of what of what is going on. But so I'm not I'm not ruling out that there could be something big coming in our solar system. I, I totally agree. You know, volcanoes are just... They're popping. They're popping. And, you know, earthquakes are still popping, but, you know, that's just a given. <clears throat> so, all right. Uh, we got six, five, five minutes, actually. Four minutes or five minutes left. Um, in October, we're going to be switching over to our new set. 
Um, I'm pretty much going to see. Uh, I don't know. I, I have some ideas. We have some people that are working with me right now that have some ideas. But we're going to be broadcasting our television show from the same studio as our radio show. So, um, And also, in October, we're going to go ahead and switch over. And we're going to be doing three hours for sure every Sunday. Um, so we've been given the okay for that. Um, and that's going to be cool. Because uh, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on, and you know, filling in three hours is not going to be a problem. I actually used to do three hours before yeah. Alan came in, and I was doing three hours, and I well, I, even oh, after he came in, yeah, we, it was yeah, three, we were hours three hours for like a couple of years, right? And uh, so it's not a problem. Um, well, the only thing we might do is like have a break, yes, so everybody could go get a drink or, yeah, or go to the bathroom yeah. break. So uh, hopefully we'll have some sponsors and just a couple of them, so we'll be able to put up maybe a sponsor for about two minutes or three minutes or something, and we all can take a break. Because going on three hours straight, guys, you, that just does You don't do that. I mean, if you wa- are listening to AM radio or, or, or talk shows, you know, there's breaks every freaking twelve minutes. Okay, twelve yeah. minutes, and it it gets very annoying because yeah. you know they got to go to break. They got to go to break. Well, they got to pay. You know, sponsors come in for commercials, and that's how they pay their DJs and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm actually we're actually looking for some sponsors. If anybody's out there wants to we'll like we'll have their banner on our website and stuff like that i mean we're not at, we don't really want a whole bunch of money or nothing mm-hmm. we just want to have some sponsors so we could get some equipment for investigating on the investigation side right. of, of the paranormal thing we do so all right uh we got one minute left and we're gonna go ahead and get out of here i appreciate everybody tuning in and congratulations to the two winners uh <laughs> you guys got yourself one heck of a book i heard that um so um hope you enjoy it um i did because i read it all in one <laughs> one setting so it's and i don't usually sit down and read books trust me D- diane cheryl whatever her name is is the one that does all the readings for me yeah um, so uh all right so i think we're gonna get out of here uh, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. Appreciate you tuning in. For Alan Thomas Everell Bonilla, you guys all have a great day, and we'll see you next week, okay? Take care. Good night. Bye, everyone. Bye. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on ArtBell.com. Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies. And we hope you witness something you cannot explain. I'm looking for you. Can I be here?